Hello everybody, this is Joseph Propati, and in this video, today I'm going to be covering a few turns uh, of my new game, CIA Sniper. Now I'm not going to cover a, a full playthrough, I just want to cover the basics of the actions that you're going to be going through on a number of turns to, you know, move around the globe, uh, getting to a city where you can accept a contract, once you have the contract, setting it up to fulfill that time frame that you have for the contract and then actually getting to the city to to uh, take the shot and then performing the shot on the shot analysis board. And I want to give those are the main fundamentals of the game and I want to cover all those because once you got that then you have the basics on how all the turn you know what you'll be doing during the turns. That's really the meat of the game. It's you know moving getting to a city to accept a contract trying to get to the target location city and then setting up to take that shot and then seeing how the weather conditions are and then playing with those days to get the best weather condition out of that out of those string of days so let's go ahead uh, if you saw my previous video I went through the setup this is basically the setup of the board and the game ready to go um, it might be a, the the position of the tokens might be a little different but this is the general setup with your money, with your guys on the board, and then modifications to the skill level. So, we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and do the first turn. And the sequence of turns is, you will draw an event card, then you will, two will be update the contracts, because sometimes uh, another agent could take a contract and remove it from that list. Then you have the enemy agents move, they do their movement phase. The player piece, you move, and then it goes into basically a take the shot phase. And those are parameters for taking the shot. So those four parts, those four phases will happen a lot until you actually accept a contract and get to the city. Then you can get into that take a shot phase. So we'll go ahead and we'll take that first turn. And again, we turn over the first event card and bad weather conditions, swap current weather card. This turn for the next worst condition. Now, we don't have any weather cards up, so this effect won't have anything. Um, against this turn. So that would really affect you if you had your weather cards up and you were in the middle of the contract. Next thing we do is contract update. Now on the very first turn you don't touch the contracts because they just were placed out and you don't want something happening to you right you know when the game starts. So I always say you skip the first contract update on the very first turn then the following one you'll go through and roll. And if when you get to that second phase the way update is is you roll a d6 if you roll a six, you'll roll that d6 again, and then you will count from one to six, and whatever that matches on the die, you remove that contract, it's out of the game, and then you will shift everything and put a new contract down. And it just means another agent in the CIA took that contract, um, and it's out of the game. So, uh, bad thing about that is, if you ever run out of the contract cards, you lose the game. So, you know, if you get run out of that before you get to ten contracts, you're, you lose the game. So we're going to skip that on the first turn, then we go to enemy agents move. Now enemy agents, there could, there's only one now, but they could get more, and they all move two spaces. And the way they move it is they track the fastest route. So here they'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So he's going to go this way, because that is what he sees as the route. Now you could go, since it's here, go 1, 2, and then start going this way, but that's a long route too, or go up and go across. But he's gonna try and take a quick fast pass. So that's the agent's movement, and then we have our movement. Now we are trying to get to one of these yellow cities so we can pick up a contract. Now we look at these contracts and you'll see some of these, if you can see in the video, the ones that have the green and the yellow, those have the plus modifiers, but they're also the lowest price contract. So, but you, you're a beginning you know, sniper, you wanna try and get these really easy ones, you know, first. So this one is in this city right here, which is in Somalia. Now that's only three way I could get to that because when I move, I have three movement. Now as I travel, my travel skill goes up, I can increase that movement to four and then when I'm at level six. So at level three, I can move four spaces and at level six, I can move five spaces. But right now it's three spaces. I'm not gonna be able to get to this one, right, where this contract is. It's just too far away. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, and I can accept this contract, right? So I put it here right off the bat, put my red token on it, 
And when you pick up a contract, just shift these over. All right. And then draw the next one. So those are always filled up. Then we start looking at the parameters of this contract. So we see what is the location where I can take the shot. It says Washington, D.C. So here, you can see on here, Washington, D.C. is five. I need to get my piece over to here where I can take that shot. That's where I can fulfill the contract. But I have so many days to get there. Days are basically equivalent to turns. And we will track days based on weather. So I look here. I have Washington, D.C. is where my target's going to be. Um, my weather weather condition is going to be two, right? So I know I'm going to be drawn from this pile only. And then I look at my turns, right? I have a time frame of three turns, which means I will draw three weather cards. And this is the amount of time I have to complete this contract. So I just slide that under there because the contract doesn't start till the following turn, right? Everything gets set up, but on the start of the next turn, that's when you got to start putting out your weather cards. So we just shove everything underneath that contract and the red token will be the turn tracker. So I've made my move, picked up my contract, can't do a shot, so we go, we go to turn two. First thing you do in, on the turn is draw the right card. Now this one says, you don't need legal passport access for the con contact city or contract city if you complete this turn only. So what that means is if I could get to this city, I can take the shot without having to worry about having legal passport access to the city. I'm not gonna make it, right, in one turn because I'd have to make it on this turn. So when I get there, I'm gonna have to purchase this, this passport stamp, which is 50,000. But if I didn't have it, right, if I didn't have access, that event would help me get through there. So once we turn this pass, this, uh, event over, we want to spread out our weather days, right? So this is the first day, second day, third day. And we mark, we're on the first day, right? So these weather conditions are what will affect the shot. If I wait till later days, those are the weather conditions that will affect the shot. So right now on this turn, this is where we're at. These are the weather conditions. Now I'm not going to make it to the city to take shot on this turn. So I won't have to worry about it. But these will start to become issues because when I get there, that's gonna be it. So right now, we've turned over the event. Let's go ahead and see, we'll do the contract update. All right, roll d6, roll to three again, nothing changes. Then we go to enemy agent movement. Now, obviously, one, two, made it, right? So this agent made it to me on the agent's movement. Now here's a couple things that have to happen to try and avoid this agent. First things first is you use your disguise, okay? Now to evade an agent, you have to roll your disguise or higher. Now obviously the higher your level, the easier it is to evade. And there are bonuses or modifiers to that as you increase in level. So if I'm at level three, I can have an evade plus one, this counter. And if I get to level six, I have evade plus two, which means I can add those to the die roll or add that to my skill level. So that means if I was at six level and I had evade plus two, I'd need a four or better. But right now I need to roll two or better to evade this guy. And the other thing you have to worry about is the more agents that are on this map, that's more of a minus to it. So if I had two other agents, then I would have to minus two, which means I never at this level would be able to evade. But those agents don't come out until I'm higher in skill and I've done more contracts. So it's three, you know, you do three contracts, another one comes out, six contracts, a third one comes out, and then when you hit nine, all four agents are out and you're trying to dodge them. So right now, I'm gonna try and evade this guy. So I'm gonna roll, and I got a three. Now, I need to roll two or better. I don't have any modifiers. Um, I don't have a modifier for the event card. So as it would stand right now, I'd be captured. But I also have another option. I can try and take out this agent. And the way that works is just like doing a shot. 
it would be just like the same preparations, which is good. I get to show you this. Um, this might be a quick game, but so we have this um, this setup where now I'm going to try and take this agent out so I can get past him. And what we do is we take, just like we're doing a shot, you know, I don't need the passport or anything. I take all my skill levels. I come over here on my agent card or my shot analysis card and we'll come here and kind of zoom into this. So you'll notice I have my six cubes, color cubes, these match the skill dice. So we look and we have, if we look at our skills, I have a disguise of two, right? I have a travel of two, a ballistic of one, a marksmanship of two, target planning of one, and positional shooting of one. So those are my initial skill level setup, right? But then I also have to take into account the weather conditions. Now, we saw that uh, our first weather condition was cloudy and windy, which means I can add plus one to travel and then another one to positional shooting. So sometimes, even when you have to deal with an agent, enemy agent, you can still take advantage of the weather conditions. So here's my setup, my first parameters. Now, Right, and if I had some, if I had any available modifiers, I could use those to affect these skill level cubes. Next step we do is take our six dice. All right, so we have our roll. Okay, we just kind of set them here for now. Right, and you want to kind of look at them and see where's the best position to place these dice. If I had rolled a one you can re-roll one. But unfortunately I have these twos, can't do much about it. But I would want to try and put those on these spaces that have the farthest uh, reach so far. And then I look at these and I have some sixes, so let's put these on the ones. And then we have a couple fours, we'll put those here. Okay, now if I had some modifiers based on the event or based on these, um, I could, uh, change these dice and either increase them or decrease them if they were negatives. But as we stand, this is what we have for our dice. Now, we go ahead and we move our cube. So we'll start here. We'll go one, two, three, four. And we go one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we got one, two. And then we got one, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four. Okay, so initially that's where we're set for our shot. But now you have some ways to mitigate the movement of these cubes, right? So you have to at least get in this head circle. You have three ranges here. You have dead center, right? You have the face, which is the yellow circle that you have to be within, or the head, which is the black circle. To take out this agent, you have to have at least all six of these within this head circle. Right, that's that's a kill. Now I have these two I gotta deal with. There's two ways to mitigate this. One is I can adjust these inner cubes, right? If I was in dead center, I could move back two, stay inside this headshot circle, and then have two bonuses to move the other cubes. If I had one, if I went from face to head, right? So let's say I do this. I have one bonus I could use, so I can move this one up one. I can move this one back one, and bring that one on. But still, I don't have all of them in this headshot. I haven't been able to take out this, this agent, enemy agent. My last option is I can pay $50,000 per hex movement, but only to get it into that headshot circle. And you can look at this as you're paying money because it, you know, it, it's set up, you, certain people you talk to, it's certain things that you set up for information and security and position and weapons. There's just thing that you could say, I used money to help me out with this, um, with dealing with this enemy agent. So I pay 50,000 and I can bring this up one hex. Now I'm good. Now I've been able to get all of these cubes in this headshot hex and I'm able to take this agent out. So I'm not, I don't have a fear of being captured but this agent is going to come right back onto the field. And the way that happens, 
So we reset all these parameters. All right, take these dice. And the way that we immediately bring this agent back out, you roll three D6. We got five, six, seven, eight. And then we place him on the space that marks. Remember I told you before, if you, there's 16 spaces to get one and a two. If you rolled 17, it'd be one. If you got 18, it'd be two. And then the rest match up. So this, you'll always at least have one enemy agent on the board. But I was able to get rid of the agent that came after me. And now I'm clear. I can now take my movement. So I still want to get to five. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay? And I'm still on this weather condition, right, for this turn. But I can't take the shot yet, so, because I'm not in the city, so that will end this turn. All right? So let's go back up to here. And again, I went from here and moved three spaces to get closer to this spot. And this is where the agent was put based on my roll, because I rolled a, an eight. And you'll see that that's an eight. Remember, if you have an enemy agent that gets killed, you, you can't put him back on the space where you're at. So you gotta just be, remember that. You'll have to re-roll again if it's gonna land on his face. So we finish this turn, right? And then the first thing we always do is move one card so we know that this will be the start of the next turn and we draw an event card. Kind of do it at the same time. So this starts the turn. Now, this one says bad weather conditions. Swap the current weather card this turn for the next worst condition card. So we look at this and we go, what's the weather condition on here? It's not ideal, right? Do we have one that's worse? So we have cloudy and windy, cloudy and windy, and then cloudy and rainy. So this one is actually worse. So, because it only has one, it has a subtraction. So we would swap these cards. And this now becomes the weather condition for today. All right. So this is the event. Uh, we go through and we see if there's a contract update. Two, nope, needed to roll a six, so that's no effect. And then we go the enemy movement. Uh, let's see if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five. And he's gonna take this route, which is great, because then I get a nice open path. My turn now. One, two, three. I'm in now the city for this contract, all right? Washington, D.C. Now, I don't have to take the shot on this day knowing that this is the worst weather condition for the day. I have one more day I can deal with this. So I have the choice. I can take the shot now, or I can wait one day and get better conditions. And that's what I think I'm going to do. But on this turn, I need to get legal access. I need to forge a stamp, buy this forged stamp. So I will spend 50000 purchase a stamp in my passport for Washington. So now that I have this, I can go to Washington and take a shot in Washington throughout the whole game. So we have, we, I've just purchased my stamp. This is now good for the rest of the game. Any other ones I'll have to purchase, but that did cost me 50,000. Now I'm in the city. I do have the uh, stamp to take the shot, but I don't like these weather conditions. They're a subtraction. <coughs> they would hurt me. So I look at here and go, okay, can this guy reach me on the next turn? And no, one, two. I'd still be able to wait a day, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to stop this turn. I'm going to end it, not take the shot. And then I'm going to go ahead and be in this turn. We start it with an event card. And it says Mogadishu Somalia is locked down. So this means 12 here, this city. If I wanted to buy a contract from there, couldn't do it because it's locked down. So I wouldn't be able to move in this city. So that's one of the events, the global events, kind of locks you out of different cities. And there's a number of those. Then we go to um, contract update. Got a five, so these contracts don't change. Then we move our enemy agent. One, two, quickest route to me. Now my turn. I'm not gonna move and I'm gonna take the shot 
on this turn, right? I have the best weather conditions, so let's go for it. Now we need to set up like we did uh, for our shot analysis board. First thing we do is we have our skill levels, right? So I'm gonna come over here again to show the shot. All right, I'll zoom in. Okay, so we have a disguise of two, one, two. We have a travel of two. And we have a ballistics of one, a marksmanship of two, planning of one, and positional shooting of one. So these are my initial levels, uh, my skill levels. So that's where we start. Now, I also have my weather condition cards. Now we look at this and we go, all right, so these are my weather condition cards. Not ideal weather condition, but I get to add one to ballistics and one to target planning. All right, so one to target planning, one to ballistic. And you have some where when they're really good, nice and sunny, you get to add one to everything. There's just some that are really good. Now, I would look at my event card. Are there any modifiers there? Nope. Uh, I look at um, if I had any of these modifiers. Those, not. I'm not high enough level yet. So now we go to rolling our dice. Again, if you roll any one, you get to re-roll. All right, so we have, this is our roll. Now, we look at this, let's just set these out. You kind of put your low ones there and your high ones here. All right, so here's our initial roll. If I had rolled a one, you can re-roll a one once as long as your skill level total, these six dice, do not go over 18. Or as long as they're, if, once they're greater than 18, you don't get to re-roll once because you now your skill levels are at least threes minimum. So, so right here, here's our initial roll. Now, can we modify these at all? Nope, we haven't done anything. We, our dice won't do it, but we have our contract card. Now, remember how I said this is a really good one because it has bonuses, these pluses. I have for sight, I have plus two. For range, I have plus one. And for cover, I have plus two. Now, these are what are going to affect the dice. So we would have these modifiers right and how it works is pluses get a, they affect the lowest dice negatives affect the, the higher dice so we're dealing with pluses so we take our two right plus two we take the lowest one which is two that gets raised to four then we take the next plus two we go to the lowest dice that raises this to four and then plus one goes to the three and raises that to four so now very helpful benefits because these are going to get these things closer to that center. And that's the only modif modifiers that we have so with the contract. That's it. So now we're going to start moving our skill level counters, these cubes. So we want to place these that will have the most effect. And we'll put these on the lowest dice. Now, since these have a two, right? Now we're definitely, I think we're definitely going to make this shot. It's just how well. Because where the cubes all land is how many skill points you get out of this contract shot. Okay, so I'll explain that when we stop. But we've got all our dice laid out. So let's go ahead. We start. We got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so right now we know we have a successful shot but we want to try and get it as close to dead center to get more skill points, to get, it's basically like prestige of saying, hey, you, you really did really well on this shot when you took this contract out. So can we get all of these into at least the face? Now we could pull this one back and we can increase this one up. But unfortunately we have two more in the headshot. And you have to have, to get those bonuses, you have to have everything within those circles, right? All cubes have to be in there. So if I had all six stacked right on top of that dead center, I would get plus three as a bonus to my skill levels. I'd get to add plus three, one, to at least three of the dice. So I get to choose. Can't, can't do all three to one dice. You, you, can, you have to spread it out. But that would be dead center. Now, if I had all six of them in the face circle, I'd get plus two bonus points to my level but as it stands since I only have four in this face 
I can only get a plus one for the shot. It's a successful shot, I'm gonna get paid, but I'm only gonna earn one point for this. Now, something to remember is, let's say after all these bonuses, I was right here, and I wasn't in the headshot. Just like in the attack uh, of the enemy agent, I can spend 50,000 to move this cube, but I can only spend 50,000 to move the cubes into the head space. I can't spend any more to get them into the face or into the dead center. So it's just enough to help prepare the shot, basically, to get it so it makes it a successful shot, right? So that, that would cost 50 grand to get this in here just to the head, and then I'd say, hey, I got a nice successful shot, and I completed the contract. Right now, I'm gonna get one, one plus to my skill level. So we've completed this, we have basically completed this contract, right? Put this back up here. We, since we're completing this, we go ahead and we remove all these weather cards, right? And something to know that if for some reason I wasn't able to get this shot on this last day and I had to go to the next, well, that contract wasn't successful in the sense I didn't do it that, that contract phase, but I could immediately try it, draw new weather cards, but the price of the contract is gonna be half. So for, let's say it was this one. I'm gonna get 100,000 for this contract. If I had messed up and didn't successfully get it in the days allowed, I'd only get 50,000 by trying to get in and having a successful shot. Now, if on that second time I fail, um, that's when, just like on a normal fail, you lose one point to one of your skill levels, the contract is, is gone, it's discarded. But now I get to put this in my inventory. I've down one contract. I will earn my 100,000, and I get my one bonus that I can put to anything here. And I think what I want to do is travel, because now I get to pick this guy up, this is my plus, this is my move four when I get to level three. So I get to put this right here on the character sheet to remind me that whenever I'm moving, I can now move four spaces. And this is kind of critical because it really helps me evade these agents, okay? But I can see that next turn I'm gonna get caught or I'm gonna have to deal with this agent again. But that right there, you know, we go ahead and reset these tokens. Put these all back to the starting position, right? And we have our contract um, that we've successfully completed over here on our inventory. And we can go ahead and start a new turn. So that, that right there shows you the whole process of going through the turns, accepting a contract, um, setting up the parameters for the contract, dealing with agents, which is really cool that we got to see that, and then actually either dealing with an agent to try and remove that agent or going through and completing the contract to get paid and then move on to the next contract. Now again, the win parameters for CIA Sniper is you need to get 10 contracts, completed contracts, before you either get captured or you run out of contracts. Um, and then when you win, you want to see one, count up what your level is, total level of all six uh, skill sets, and the amount of money you've earned. And then there'll be a, a, a scale on where you'll sit based on how much money you've earned and you know what that combination is. Um, uh, right now I'm doing for how the agents and those parameters, three agents, once you get, you get one agent when you get to three contracts, another, you know, you'll have three agents out here. If you get to six contracts completed and once you get to nine contracts, you'll have all four agents out here trying to search you down. So it makes it very difficult because there's a lot more evade. And that's when you really want to get your disguise seal up. Because the higher you get that, just much easier to, uh, to eliminate um, dealing with that. Because you get your disguise to six, and then you have your evade plus two. Basically, you know, eight or higher. The only thing that would trip you up is if you had all four agents out here, you'd basically have to get... Um, a five or higher, or you know, five or lower, but if you roll six, that's the only time you get caught. So 
it's never perfect. You're never going to be out of a perfect situation where even at six, once you get all the agents out here, you just can't get away. It's there's might be a possibility of, of just rolling and just not getting the right roll. So there we go. This is my game, CIA Sniper. Uh, I hope that made sense on how a, how the turns work and how you accept a contract, move, um, get a you know purchase a passport stamp, go through and dealing with agents, and then making that final shot and how that all that manipulation of dice and cubes hones in on the best shot possible. So I appreciate you watching. Um, if you like what you see, go ahead and uh, click on that subscribe button, click the bell. Um, I always make a new videos. I'll, I'll make a, I'm gonna be making a couple more of this to show some more turns, explain some more of the rules. Um, but I'm always having new games on here. So I, I appreciate you watching and till next time.